Gabriella. My name is Ellen. I will be correcting these essays for you. Let's take a look at what you have done here. We have a letter to your friend writing about your lake house. Let's see. Dear Philippe, I have rented a dream house to spend my summer days. It is near everything and I have been relaxing very much. I am sure you would enjoy it too. The house is very well located. It is just a few steps from shops and restaurants where I often go window, go to window shopping during the day and in the night I go for dinner. But most importantly, it has a breathtaking view to the lake, which makes me start my day in a better mood. I usually spend my lazy summer days in this house. I wake up late, half bond, then I rent a boat and stay in the lake for hours reading. When I am hungry, I go back to the shore and buy some fresh fish from the local fish market so I can cook lunch. I would love if you could visit me here. Although the place is amazing, sometimes I feel alone and your company would make the days even more special. Okay. Um, so there's a lot I want to talk about here. Let me just make this a little smaller. Okay. So there are a few basic things here that I think need to be worked on. The good news is that your grammar was good. Okay. So I saw that there really wasn't a lot of error with your grammar. Um, everything you wrote was fine. I think you maybe used a little too many commas, but that's not a huge problem. Overall, it read fine. I didn't misunderstand anything. I didn't have any trouble understanding any, everything. So that was like a good thing. Your vocabulary was also okay. I mean, I'm not really sure what score you need, but I think the vocabulary you used did the job. Okay. So it got your message across. Uh, was it high level vocabulary? No, it wasn't, but everything you did use was accurate. So now let's talk about where the problems are. There are a couple. First of all, let's start from the very end. This is not how you end a letter. You have to write a salutation, some sort of a sign off. Your friend, Gabriella, okay? Or miss you, comma, Gabriella. You absolutely have to write that, okay? This feels incomplete without it. Then I want to talk a little bit about letter writing in general. This is a letter to a friend. It's very specific. Okay. It says, describe the house, describe how you're spending your time there and invite your friend. So what they've essentially done for you here is they've given you an outline of how they would like you to paragraph, or if you prefer how they suggest that you write out your paragraphs. Okay. So that's the first thing. So you could basically break down your paragraphs with each one of these bullets being the central idea. However, what I felt in your letter was that it was very unnatural. It didn't feel like you were writing a letter. It felt like you were writing an essay about your house. It didn't feel like you were talking to somebody else, but rather you were just describing the house, describing your time there, and that's it. So you have to remember that there must be a personal tone to this. Let me tell you what I mean. When we're writing a letter to a friend, we would never start out just like this. Straight away, I have rented a dream house. Okay. There are certain pleasantries that we always uh, use when we're writing a letter. So for example, dear Philippe, how are you, my friend? I can't believe um, summer has come and we still have not met up. Uh, to be honest, I have had a lot of changes in my life, so I decided to let you know what some of them are. First of all, I have rented a wonderful house on the lake to spend my summer days, and this is allowing me to relax. Okay, and this was fine. I'm sure you would enjoy it too. That was fine. Um, so here... I want you to engage your friend a little bit. Like I said, it felt like an essay when you were talking about a house. I didn't feel like you were talking to a friend or writing a letter to a friend. Okay, so let me tell you how I, how I would have liked to see this. The house is very well located. It is just a few steps from shops and restaurant where I often go window shopping during the day and at night I go for dinner. All right, and then here you could have said, there is a fabulous restaurant called ABC that I know you would absolutely adore. They make XYZ food, which I know is your favorite. Okay, so that's something you could do here. 
Uh, let's see, what does it say? Describe the house. All right, well, you didn't really describe it, did you? You said that it is well located, and then you talked about what you do. Uh, what would have been better, even than what I just said, is if you actually describe the house. So the house is very well located. Say whatever you said, but then say, it has large windows that look directly upon the lake. Therefore, when the sun rises, the uh, light uh, of the morning um, gently enters the cottage and it is so peaceful and lovely that it wakes me up in the best mood. Okay, something like this. Describe the house means describe the house. There's two bedrooms, there's a kitchen, there's a cozy living room, there's a, a porch that looks onto the lake and the porch has a wonderful rocking chair. Okay, so this is how you describe, all right? All you really did here was you said where it is and then how you spend your day. Here also, how you spend your day. So if you really think about it, you didn't describe the house at all. You spent two paragraphs saying how you spend your days. Okay, this was fine. Um, so, again, you needed to describe it. And then, this was really very sudden. Although the place is amazing, sometimes I feel alone and your company would make the days feel more special. I hope you will consider my invitation and um, say you will come to join me before the summer is over. Period. Hope to hear from you soon, your friend, Gabriella. Okay, so there are certain steps we take in order to close out a letter. This was really very sudden. So you need to have a nice closing, kind of wrapping everything up. And then, as I said before, the sign off, the salutation, the, the goodbye, like yours, your friend, Gabriella. Uh, hugs and kisses, Gabriella. Speak to you soon, Gabriella. Okay, you get the point. So this is for me what was missing from this letter. The first uh, bullet where you didn't really describe and then um, a little bit of a better closing that made it less abrupt. Okay, so let's see. Do you have your task two here as well? You do. Explain some of the possible reasons for traffic and solutions. Okay, so reasons and solutions. In big cities around the world, traffic, well, we don't say traffic jam. We usually say traffic jams have become an increasing problem. I believe that the poor quality of public transport and the lack of options to use alternative transportation are the major causes of the problem. Fortunately, although these issues have led to heavy traffic congestion, there are ways that we can solve this issue. Perfect, I like that. Only thing that I would change here is issues. Issues, okay. Uh, you could have just said we can solve this. Um, yeah, you wrote problem here. I would have preferred a different vocabulary word or even just that we can well, you know what? There are ways that this can be solved even better. Passive voice, um, which is a little more advanced and you don't have to worry about the word issues. All right, the low quality of public transport has pushed many people away from this travel option. For example, many people prefer to use their own car when they need to go to work or take their kids to school because they feel insecure or because it takes too long. In some countries, there are many incidents of people being robbed while using public transportation. Also. Sometimes traveling with a bus may take much more time than using a private car. Therefore, due to safety and convenience, some people prefer to drive their own car, which ends up adding to the number of, vehicle, of cars in the city centers. Okay, so let's talk about the order of what you wrote. Here, let's see. You said because they feel insecure or because it takes too long. Okay, you know what? Here's what I would have liked. So how about this? It's not really for example. So you said that the low quality has pushed many people away from this travel uh, option. This is not a for example. What you mean to say instead is more specifically, because you're simply expanding on this, okay? Many people prefer to use in their own car uh, because they feel insecure about public transportation. Leave this out then. There are issues of people being robbed, okay? So you talk about people feeling insecure and then you explain why, because they get robbed. Then talk about this. Another issue with public transportation is how much time it takes. Nowadays with our busy lifestyles, 
people cannot afford to waste time on a bus. Uh, more specifically, traveling with a bus may take much more time than using a private car. Do you see what I did? So I took this sentence and I split it up because these are two different ideas. This idea about insecurity and this idea about how much time it takes. So when you talk about feeling insecure, then go into detail about being insecure. Then when you talk about the bus taking too long, go into detail and use all of this support and this extension about the bus taking too long. When you do it the way you have done it, it affects your coherence and cohesion score because the ideas are not logically organized, okay? You had this one idea and then you had basically an extension of that idea. And then all of a sudden you had this idea here about the bus taking so long, but you only talked about that way up here. So the order of your ideas is a little confusing. That's why I suggest splitting this sentence here, okay? Not saying, for example, but saying something like more specifically. And then if you're gonna talk about why people are insecure, explain why. If you're gonna talk about why it takes too long, directly after that, explain why, okay? Okay, so another reason for heavy traffic in the major cities is a lack of alternative transportation. Some people would rather ride their bike to work or walk, but there is no infrastructure set up for this. For instance, some major cities, especially not specially, you need an E here, in developing countries, we're not designed to cater for bikes as a means, it's always plural means, uh, so the unavailability of dry bike tracks makes it a challenge for those who would like to adopt this commuting option. Okay, nice. The same applies to walking. If there are no sidewalks or if the sidewalks are not safe, people will be discouraged to walk to work or to leave their kids uh, walking to school. That's a little weird. Leave their kids to walk to school. Hence, this will also, this will also contribute to more people choosing their own car to move around the city. Okay. Um, I like this paragraph. I thought it was well organized. I thought you had really great language. So that's good. Let's look at your solution. As a possible solution, I would recommend investing in improving public transport and providing people with more traveling options. For example, if we have safer and better integration between different public transports, people can reach their, not destiny, their destination, careful, safely and faster. As a result, this might encourage more people to opt for public vehicles. Also, if we have safe places where people can ride their bikes or walks, this might reduce the number of single vehicles on the streets. Okay. To conclude, I believe that a better and safer infrastructure for public transport with additional options for transportation can contribute to minimizing the problem of traffic congestion in major cities around the world. Okay. So, um, what I want to talk about, again, I want to just shrink this down a little bit so you can see it's not shrinking. Maybe I need to do something else. Okay. So I want to show you something about this. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with what the band descriptors look like or if you've read them. Maybe you have. But what I want to do is I want to um, just kind of refer to something in task achievement under band seven and under band six. I can't remember specifically where. But it says covers all parts of the task uh, clearly or adequately or equally. There's something, there's one of those adverbs there. I think it's equally, but I, I don't quote me. Um, or fully, I can't remember the adverb. Anyway, the point is, is that you had two things to do here, reasons and solutions. Okay. So what I found is that you had two paragraphs about reasons, and then you only have this one little paragraph about solutions. And I want to suggest to you not to do that. You really want to try to balance these as much as possible. So if you're going to have two paragraphs about reasons, you really should have two paragraphs about solutions. However, obviously I know that that's too much. So what you could have done instead is really just try to condense your two paragraphs about reasons and make it one paragraph. And then have a solutions paragraph that um, really just kind of corresponds to the problems paragraph. Does that make sense? I don't need you to be obsessive about making sure you have the same word count, but it's really not a good idea to 
to have two paragraphs about reasons and only one paragraph about solutions. Because again, look at the band descriptors and it says covers all parts of the task equally. Well, if you've got two paragraphs for your reasons and only one for your solutions, that's not equal coverage, is it? Okay, so try to balance that out a little bit. Condense some of this stuff about the reasons and then maybe support and maybe embellish your paragraph about solutions a little more. Okay, um, I was really happy with a lot of the grammar I saw. Where was it where you used these lovely if? Here it is. If there are no sidewalks, and then you did it somewhere else. If we have safer and better integration. So all of that was really lovely, and you did that really well. So I was happy with a lot in this essay. Um, your vocabulary it was also very good. Okay, so we already talked about some of the problems in that first paragraph, problems with... Um, task achievement and with coherence and cohesion, about things not being ordered really correctly. But then we also talked about task achievement and how you really want to kind of balance your paragraphs a little better, okay? So um, I'm really excited about where you are uh, with your IELTS preparation. You're at a good point because your language level is good. What we need to work on together is making sure your writing skills are where they need to be. So. Um, I want to invite you to look at the links in the email you're going to get, which show you how you can continue working with us. Um, do take a look. I'd love to continue working with you and helping you reach your IELTS goal. So hopefully I will see more of your work in the future. Good luck.